Well, I do want to welcome all of you to the house of the Lord this afternoon. And uh, I'm sure you've heard of the preacher who dreamt that uh, he was preaching. And uh, he woke up and he really was. Now, some of you are hoping to see if that would happen today, given the fact that I got back only yesterday. But we shall see, fingers crossed. Uh, on a very serious note, I do want to thank all of you for your prayers, uh, your messages of concern, uh, just to make sure that everything was well. And uh, as you know, it was uh, a trip that was of a personal nature. But as always, there are elements of ministry and uh, elements of other activities related to the kingdom that uh, are intertwined, uh, enmeshed, and as a result of that, uh, it served to be an extremely fruitful uh, time uh, in Sri Lanka. I got to meet with many, many pastors and uh, many of the workers across the island. And uh, one highlight of my stay there was meeting with the Beverleys. And uh, we spent a considerable time chatting. And as you know, Stephen's doing his uh, uh, doctoral research in intercultural studies. So we chatted about uh, adult education. Uh, in South Asia, how it is done. And then, of course, they also shared about their project, which they want to get started sometime this year. And it is one of those uh, sustainable initiatives that they talked about when they were with us not too long ago. And uh, Pastor Roger may have uh, given you an update about it last Sunday because I've been in touch with uh, Pastor Roger and Neil, keeping them abreast of what's going on. And uh, this project essentially is where they want to bring all pastors and their families together. And uh, it's not just another pastoral family camp or pastor's family camp, but they do want to bring them together and uh, explain the vision of the Church of God and uh, even instruct them on some of the basic doctrines because this is the first time that uh, such an event is taking place. So please pray for that, and um, they are putting together a proposal, and when I hear that, I will share that with council, and uh, this is something that we need to pray and uh, seek the Lord if we want to support them in this venture. So it is uh, an initiative that will bring all these pastors uh, on the same page, as it were, on the platform of the Church of God vision, and uh, they also want to bring in the families, work with the young people, so many things are being uh, talked about, thought through, they are putting together the proposal. And uh, while I was away, as you know, Angela and I have been visiting, prior to my departure to Sri Lanka, we've been visiting the community centers over here. And uh, there were lots of emails that have been coming. And uh, one of the concerns or one of the initiatives they have been asking us uh, from the Oriole excuse me, Oriol Community Center over here, uh, and some of the other, the North York Food Bank, many groups like that, if we would do something for Palm Sunday. And uh, so we will be visiting them uh, sometime next week, and we will keep you posted. I'll keep Neil, uh, Council, and Pastor Roger informed about that. So thank you very much for your prayers, and uh, that's really in terms of the update. Now, uh, if we could ask God for one thing, what would that one thing be? If there was one thing that we could ask God and God would say, I would give that to you, what would that one thing be? For some of us, it might be, okay, God, I do want your intervention, your healing, your deliverance in this situation that I'm going through in my family. It might be healing. Uh, it might be a financial situation that you might be going through. If there was one thing you could ask God, it might be maybe you want your boss transferred in your workplace. Uh, maybe you have a difficult colleague. Or the one thing that you might ask God right now might be, God, I pray this is going to be a short sermon. We all have uh, different needs that we want to bring before God. But it has been said that what we ask God for depends and how the manner in which we ask God for depends on where we are on our journey of faith. The story is told of a man who was uh, asked by an angel that appeared on behalf of God and the angel said you could ask God for any one thing and you will get it but the condition is that your enemy will be blessed twice. 
So if you ask for $1,000, then uh, your enemy will get $2,000. And so with that condition, you can ask God for anything. And so this man thought for a while, and he said, I asked God that I would be blind in one eye. Well, it doesn't take much imagination to figure out the level of that person's spirituality and what was going on uh, in, the inner, in the inner being or the depths of his heart. And so even in the Bible, we see people asking God for very interesting things. You remember Salome, the mother of James and John. She came to our Lord and she said, Lord, have my two sons sit one on the right and one on the left. And what did our Lord Jesus Christ say? He said, you do not know what you are asking for. And sometimes we ask things, but our motives are questionable. And then we think of the people of Israel in the Old Testament. They came before God, they came to Samuel and said, ask of God that we want a king. Now there was nothing wrong with a king because there was always the plan, there was the place of the king. If you read Deuteronomy and Numbers, you will see that. But the motive with which they asked was what made God very sad. And why did they want a king? As we see in 1 Samuel chapter 8, they wanted a king because the other nations have a king. So there are times in our lives where we ask God for different things. But the question is, why are we asking God for what we are asking? And today in our reading, we, we see Moses in a very difficult situation. And we see in the midst of what he is surrounded by, he asks God for something very interesting, something very unusual. From our readings that Sarah read for us today, we see that Moses is in a very difficult situation. He's gone up to be with God for 40 days and 40 nights. Exodus 24 reminds us that God called him up. And God fashioned the tablets, God wrote, God wrote the Ten Commandments, and Moses is up there, God instructs him in, uh, in different aspects of the tabernacle, the ark, the priestly garments, all these things God provides instruction. And it seems that finally things are moving forward with the nation. It seems like Things are ascending. It, things like, it seems like now things are falling into place. There is hope for the nation. And so Moses is up there. He's got all these instructions. And he's on his way down almost. And then he is told that the people have moved away from God so quickly. And you know the story of the golden calf. And so Moses is very angry. And he dashes the two stone tablets, you know the story, in anger, in frustration. God is disappointed and he says, Moses, let me deal with these people and I will start all over again with you. And so it seems like one little decision that these people have made while Moses was away has now caused all these things to go downhill. And I believe that in our life, at some point, at some place, we have been in a situation like that. Where things were looking good, things were on an upward trend, we were climbing the mountain of hope, and suddenly something unexpected happens, and we are sliding down the mountain of hope. So here's Moses in Exodus chapter 33, very disappointed, confused that the people have let him down and at a time like this he makes a very unusual request of God and that is why my reflection is titled what would we ask God this is the season of Lent and I'm sure we are praying we are fasting we are asking God for many things but the question or the request that Moses makes of God is something that we want to pay attention. Now, the way I see it, Moses had three important things pressing on him. 
Right now, the people have disobeyed God. They have uh, prostrated themselves before this calf, this golden calf, and they seem to have just moved away. So the first problem he has is that he has a vacillating, uncooperative group of people. They are good with God one day, and one never knows which way and when they will turn the next. And so he has this group of people that he's working with. Secondly, he has the enemies. In fact, as you read uh, Exodus 33, the early part, you will see there are descriptions uh, provided about the enemies. There are the Canaanites, the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the list goes on. And you have these enemies who are waiting to destroy the people of Israel. And thirdly, there is this continuous need for supply. We all know the stories when there was a shortage of water, the people complained. When there was a shortage of food, the people complained. And so he has this continuous and consistent need for supply, for provision. And with all these three elements, these three pressing needs, what would Moses ask for? And we ask ourselves the question, if we had these three situations, what would we ask for? We, had, uh, we have a group of people who are not cooperating with us. We have enemies who are trying to stop us. We have this need all the time for various supplies and provisions. What would we ask God for? Moses could have prayed the prayer of James and John, which is found in Luke chapter 9. I preached on this some time ago where James and John said, Lord, should we bring down fire and destroy the Samaritans? Moses could have prayed that prayer and said, God, let's destroy these people. Let's start all over again. But instead, Moses says, he asks for three things from God. And what are the three things he asks of God? Here's God saying, Moses, I, I like you. I like to work with you. Tell me what can I do for you? And first in verse 13, God say, uh, Moses says, teach me your ways. Moses is saying, Lord, teach me your ways. Let me know more about you. Instruct me in your ways. Rather than saying, God, deal with this group. Rather than saying, God, deal with the situation here. He says, grant me a deeper revelation of who you are. In verse 13, he says, God, teach me your ways. And then in verse 15, he says, let your presence go with us. In fact, Moses says, if your presence does not go with us, do not move from here. We are not moving from here. It is important for us that your presence goes with us. And thirdly, he says, God, show me your glory. In verse 18, uh, he says, reveal your glory to me. And the Lord says, you cannot see my glory and live, but I'm going to grant you the grace where I will pass and you will catch a glimpse of me from behind. In other words, God is saying, you cannot see me and live, but I will grant you a special revelation as to who I am. If you look at these three requests in verse 13, in verse 15, and verse 18, you will see that all three requests have to do with Moses wanting to know more about God. And I find that very interesting because surrounded by these three problems that he's facing, surrounded by these disappointments he's experienced as he heard these news about the people drifting away from God, here is Moses, the man of God, saying, God, grant me a deeper revelation of who you are. Let me understand more about you. And even as we go through this season of Lent, it's quite possible that as human beings, we've all been in this space, in this place where Moses was. There are disappointments, there are frustrations, there are unanswered prayer requests, and the temptation is to keep praying, saying, God, deal with this, deal with that person, deal with this situation. But instead, maybe like Moses, we can rise to a higher level and say, God, help me discover more about yourself. And if you look at Moses' prayers or the three requests he makes, these are wise requests. 
because Moses probably recognized if he could know more about God, if he could understand more about God, then he sees himself in new light, he sees people in new light, and he sees his circumstances in new light. And we see this is indeed a very profound prayer. I want to draw our attention to a prayer that has been attributed to David Livingston. David Livingston, as you know, was the famous missionary to Africa. And here's how he prayed. He said, God, send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me. Only sustain me. And sever any tie in my heart except the tie that binds my heart to yours. And so you will see there are no conditions. He's saying, Lord, you take me anywhere, but you just go with me. Place any burden on me, unconditional, but you sustain me. And then he says, sever any tie, that bi uh, sever any tie in my heart except the tie that binds my heart to yours. And that prayer, I thought, was a prayer that we could all pray during this season of Lent. We are saying, God, I'm going through many challenges, many circumstances, but God, I'm praying that you will grant me a deeper revelation of who you are. So when I see myself from your perspective, I am able to take on any challenge and face any situation that comes my way. So as we go back to this passage... We see that in Moses' life, there is a growth in his prayer life as well. This was the same Moses who at the early stages would ask God, do you really want me to go send somebody else, so on and so forth. But as you study the life of Moses, you see right through the book of Exodus, there is growth, there is maturity in his prayer life, and now he recognizes that he is the man, he is the person whom God has called to deliver the people. In fact, at one point when God says, I will deal with these people and I will start with you all over again. Moses says, God, do not deal with these people harshly. If you want to, remove me from the book that you have prepared. And I thought that is a test of Moses' maturity. And here again we see in Exodus 33, he's saying, God, the one thing I ask you is reveal more of yourself, more of who you are, so that I can face the future. Go with me, and that's all I ask of you. And so this season of Lent, may we ask God for his presence, his presence to go with us, his presence to come with us, so that with God, we can face every challenge that uh, we will face for the years ahead. May God bless the reflection of his word this afternoon.